hockey. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. Yes, it is Judd's Hockey Show. Welcome in. It's Judd. It's Jesse Pierce, of course, Bar Down Beauties, and also covers the wild for the um, NHL.com website. A.J. Fredrickson in for Declan Goff, who's at the dentist right now. No, it's not a hockey injury. It's actually just the fact that he can't get into the dentist for like six months, and so he had to go. Um, and it's a show that's going to talk about what I would say is uh, perhaps the next Stanley Cup champions because the Minnesota Wild in four games with John Hines looks like they will not be beat. Uh, let's just start with, with this. So since John Hines got the job, I think we had done one show, which was the St. Louis win last week. Um, then they go to Nashville on Thursday and absolutely beat a Predators team that was playing really well at the time. Uh, then they come back and beat a Blackhawks team that's pretty awful at home. And then Last night, go to a Calgary team that has not had a good season, but has been better of late, Jesse, and uh, they beat them. They have some, they have a little bit, it's a little bit more dicey, but it's still a nice win. Uh, What do you have to say for this team? Since you're around them the most of any of us, what do you have to say for what has happened here? Like the, and I know that John Hines has done probably some good things, but like this change has been so drastic. I'd be curious what your assessment is now after four games. I can't make sense of it. I'm sure a lot of us are left scratching our head because frankly, again, as, as we've discussed at length, it wasn't necessarily Dean's fault. This wasn't the re, you know, they needed a change. There wasn't much else they could do. And technically it's still a lot of Dean's systems in place. It's still a lot of his lines. It's still a lot of those same guys. It's funny having caught up with Dean on this week's episode of Bar Down Beauties. We were talking at length about how, you know, Ottawa went to bat for DJ Smith saying, hey, we want to play for this guy. And Dean's like, I wish our guys maybe would have said that jokingly, of course, right? Because of course they had respect. But it's curious. It really is because we all know how a voice can change the dynamic of a room. Last year, they did it with Ryan Reeves and bringing him in and how his vocalism was really going to change things. John Hines, to me, from the outside and the little media interaction that we've had so far, doesn't seem like a booming, loud type of guy. And I don't know if maybe he's sending these messages gentler and if that's the way it's being received better i really have no idea because these guys have turned it up a level that has clearly always been there and they just weren't doing it for whatever reason it's just it's really head scratching as you mentioned beating calgary who's been playing incredibly well was a big win it was a a statement win if they go into vancouver and play as good as they did in calgary there's no you know no chance that they're going to get blown out there which had you asked me last week is what i would have thought when they were going to face the canucks so i don't have an answer i really really don't and That frustrates me because I like knowing things. I like being right. But (laughs) I'll say I was wrong. Apparently, this team is better than I had projected. Paige, go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of weird to see just how quickly they could flip the switch just in a matter of what felt like almost hours from seeing the announcement. Then an hour and a half later, hey, now we're going to move on to the John Hines era of the Minnesota Wild. And then the next day, more energy. They're passes are a little bit crisper they're holding onto the puck and the turnovers seem to have dwindled a little bit they're still there a lot but um something i noticed last night is just like there's more attention to smaller aspects of the game for instance pinching on defense on that blue line they're stepping up and when that blue liner steps in the low winger there comes to support as like a almost if they double back hey the, there's pressure on you immediately but then that high forward seems to almost reciprocate and like add insurance to the uh, to behind the blue liner. So they're they're doing just smaller extra steps that are making them overall a better hockey team. And like Jesse said, a lot of the stuff is still the same. So why weren't they doing this under Dean Evison? It's a mystery right now. But as we get more and more into the John Hines era of Minnesota Wild Hockey, more of his fingerprint is all over this team. Will this stuff improve? Will it be continuous the rest of the season? It's nice that they it seemingly have turned things around. Because if you continue down that rabbit hole where it's just bad hockey night after night, and you, I know the statistic is about that Thanksgiving time, if you don't turn it around, then you're kind of out of luck for the remainder of the season. And you're really just playing catch up. They're still playing catch up, but you now have turned the corner, and it seems like you're going to have to just keep playing this style of hockey, and things will eventually just kind of dwindle away. You're going to chip away at those division leaders, and you're going to get right back into that playoff mix, no, no, no problem. So I think the thing uh, in these four games that's the obvious talking point is the goaltending has gone from being unplayably bad to being really, really good. I, I mean, Gus has started uh, three games, Flurry one. 
Um, Gustafson's save percentage has uh, spiked from he was two six and two in eleven games with Dean as the coach. Save percentage of eight eighty one. He is now three and zero with John Hines. Save percentage of nine fifty one. And last night again, he looked fantastic on several saves. Um, the other thing, and and Jess and I were both at the game on, on Sunday against the Blackhawks, and I tried to ask Hines about the speed because that that's the other thing. This team is playing at a pace now that they played with under Dean initially for sure. Um, but you realize w- when you see this uh, four game, John Hines version versus the games that Dean coached, how much quicker they look l- like they're playing. And I think Hines has instituted some breakout moves uh, that players have certainly used. So it's not like football where you go in and change an entire offense. Right. But it looks like he is it looks like he has refined probably what he wants as far as getting through neutral quickly. Then you don't have to be in a place to dump and chase at the blue line because you're the opposing team defensively can't get back to the blue line in time. That's the one thing I think that's key, but I'm with Jess and, and age. I mean, I, it is remarkable and I don't think it's all just a fluke. I think some of it is that Dean got l- let go and that kickstarted him. But when you look at how they're playing now, and to Age's point, how engaged that this t- team looks. I, I mean, the play last night where the puck is in their zone, Rossi loses his stick. And so he's without a stick. Kaprizov then turns and gives his stick to Rossi. Rossi goes and gets the puck and clears it out and doesn't ice it. Now, maybe I missed this with Dean there two weeks ago. But Jesse, I mean, these are the things where... They do. They just look like they're engaged now. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm happy about that or more frustrated by how poor they they were playing. But um, it does. I mean, if nothing else, it looks like what we saw when they went from yo to torch. It really looks like that big a change. I mean, Marcus Foligno, walking defenseman. Like, who? Where did he get well, the yeah. confidence to do such things like <laughs> I don't that? Know. I you were trying to trade him, just, and so was I. I, you know, it's it's insane. There, I mean, it's crazy how important confidence is, and the more they win, and the more they perform like this. And that's the thing; they're winning these games the right way. I mean, they're playing hockey the right way. And I think for me, as elated as I am to see them winning, to see them continue this win streak, I'm frustrated because it does make you wonder why did you not have this? I thought they played fine against Florida. I thought they played well. It was a very hampered Florida from game one and that game they obviously won. But then you didn't see that ever again. You didn't see that shutdown defense. AJ had talked about the pinching. You didn't see it all kind of disappeared and they stopped playing hockey again for whatever reason. And now that they've won a couple games, now they're feeling good. And and I don't know. I don't know what you point to, but in all facets, even John Merrill, usually I am down, 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 down on John Merrill. He didn't look as bad in the past couple games when uh, John Hines has been forced to play him. So I don't know what it is that it everybody is now playing at this next level. I think there's probably an element of guilt that they got Dean Evison fired, but it does make me wonder where was this? Cause it just, it's not something that should just, re- it didn't have, it hasn't even reemerged. It never showed up this year. And for whatever reason, they decided to do it now where they have a huge battle ahead of themselves. They are still quite a ways out of playoffs. I think five points is what I saw this morning. Um, it's going to be an uphill battle, even as, tough as the central can be the central is getting better teams are getting better winnipeg's looking pretty good um so i think minnesota put themselves behind the eight ball by having such a bad start but it is comforting to know that there is some good in this can at least for this season the poster child you guys too for this entire uh conversation matt boldy so matt matt boldy went from in 12 games played with Dean because he got hurt in the second game of the season against the Maple Leafs in Toronto. So in 12 games with Dean, a goal, eight points, zero power play goals. Okay. He was a ghost. He was a no show in four games in four games with John Hines. He has four goals, five points, two power play goals. Let's talk about this one. Because this one, I do fall. I mean, God bless him. His confidence is back and he seems like a nice kid. But my God, like this is a what, where, where was this? Like, this is you, dude. Like, you're this good. You, you know, and, and I have PTSD about wild wingers like this because Coyle pulled the same stunts and it got him traded. Greenway did. And I don't think Jordan's great, but I mean, you know, it eventually got him traded. 
we always lamented the fact that Alex Tuck was the guy who got away because he he played like we like we thought a power forward should play. So I think with Boldy, I think it's a really interesting question about what exactly has sparked you, dude, because you went from a guy that I thought should probably be scratched for a game to a guy now who you, he can't be stopped. He's got four goals in four games. Age, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, what a turnaround. And it's the same thing. It's like a mystery, but I'm, I want to just accredit it to probably he's a young guy going through like his real first professional slump. You know, you get, I thought he looked really solid in that first game and a half until he got hurt. You get, you know, immediately dislodged from the season. You miss double digit games and you come back the puck's just not kind of finding the back of the net. You know you have the talent. You know you've done that before. You've had those stints. It builds up frustration. He's a young guy. You're, you're at professional level. You're going to have to experience that at some point. I'm glad it got cut off when it did because anything longer than that could have been harmful to just like kind of the mindset and development as a pro player. But, uh, you know, it, it, that one, it, it, it is one of those things where I was hoping – it wasn't going to be an empty netter that breaks the slump, gets the monkey off the back, because that doesn't feel genuine. A right. breakaway goal where you almost put the puck through the twine, that, that'll that do it. So um, that kind of cleared the head. It got the clouds parted. And since then, same thing as like I was talking about to the finer details, he just seems a little quicker. He seems to be getting to those areas a little faster. His, his stick handling seems to have elevated because he now has that confidence once again in himself and to his teammates, he doesn't feel like that burden of going out there and, you know, trying to make the extra pass because maybe I can't score this one. Maybe I have to put it across the ice to find, uh, you know, Marcus Johansson to get that uh, to get the goal or the scoring chance rather than me just firing for the sake of shooting for a rebound because I know I'm not going to score, of course. But now that he has that confidence in himself again, he's out there doing what Matt Boldy is meant to do, which is get to a dangerous area and let one rip because he's got a shot on him. And now he knows – Hey, I've seen the puck go in. Now I've done it a couple times. I've got the tip, uh, tip drill down up front on these power plays, and everything just is coming together for him. So it's been a really, really fun turnaround to watch in real time. I mean, for me, it, it is. It's the hands, and the shot is back, right? I, I certainly – I always hate to focus too much on the lack of production from these players, whether it's Kirill Caprice or from Matt Boldy. Certainly that's why you sign them. You need them to put the puck in the back of the net. But also Matt Boldy just looked like a completely lost kid out there. He didn't have the hands. His skating stride seemed a little bit off. And not to mention Marcus Johansson hasn't exactly helped Matt Boldy like he did last year. That has been a very tough saddle for Boldy to ride. But AJ is absolutely right. I mean, he's just a different player. It's exciting to see him he gets the goal monkey off his back but more importantly to me it's he's looking like him old his old self it's no longer just a shell of the person he was last year he's moving the puck he's creating plays and again he's doing that even with Marcus Johansson who is not really contributing a heck of a whole lot to him or really anybody on this team and I I think the thing with Matt in particular too is what I want to see is because just you're right he's going to go through like scoring slumps and stuff but what i what i want to see is him play with an edge constantly because of his position like dude you're big enough and you you should be able to if nothing else contribute Mm -hmm. like we should notice you you've got the size and the skill to be on a nightly basis noticed and i think what frustrated me was he looked like he was uh he was playing like he was five foot six (laughs) like he looked completely lost (laughs) like like age said his confidence like you can't you can't let your confidence just be like, well, it's gone now, right? Yeah. Um, okay, continuing down the positive path. And I was hard on this guy. And statistically, he, he was playing well. Um, but it's definitely, in my opinion, picked up here. It's not Kirill yet. It's Zuccarello. Mm-hmm. So I was all for breaking up. And this could could have involved uh, Kirill being t- demoted as well. But and I was all for breaking up Kirill and Matt's. But I went back and looked, and I give him credit. In 19 games with Dean, he had five goals and 21 points. In four games now with Hines, he's at one goal and five points. Um, He's been far more consistent than I thought from watching him, and he probably gets a lot of credit for actually producing, at least statistically, at a time when a lot of his teammates weren't producing. And if I'm not mistaken, he just turned – 36 and that was one of the contracts that we've talked about as far as the extension which by the way the two-year extension doesn't kick until next year um but statistically at least he's been pretty impressive and pretty consistent jess 
Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I think Zuccarello obviously always plays second fiddle to Kirill Kaprizov. Everybody looks at, well, sure, he's playing with Kirill. Well, also, Kirill plays with Mats, and Mats helps Kirill be Kirill just as much as the other way around. And I do think it's funny because I also went and looked back at some of Zuccarello's stats because Minnesota has managed to squeeze the best years out of Zuccarello even as he's aging. I have no idea how or why. I mean, you go back to 2021, uh, 22, where the Wild had obviously an incredible year. It was it was their year, no question about it, where he had seven. 79 points, 24 goals, 55 assists. He followed that up last year with 67 points, 22 goals, and 45 assists. And as you'd mentioned, Judd, he's already on solid pace with 27 points for the year. Um, it's it's incredible. It's fun to watch. I mean, I know we go back and Paul Fenton calling him the Lizard King because he was always kind of <laughs> doing whatever. I still don't understand that, to, to be completely honest with you. But uh, <laughs> it is. It's it's fun to see. It makes you, you know, you, you're still hesitant about that extension, right? You're still like, can he really keep this pace up? But he's proven to do just that as his age goes up. His his points have not really declined a whole lot. So that's definitely promising. Um, and again, I think Marco Rossi's also helping on that line. It's helping Kirill and Matt Zuccarello. I think that's something that's really overlooked. I think a lot of people are looking at how Zuki and Kaprizov are helping Rossi. Well, I think Rossi's helping those two find their group because he is consistent night in and night out in the way that he plays and I think that helps Kirill and Matt's find their games and, and continue their trajectory forward too. Yeah, and Matt Zuccarello is kind of not he's obviously more productive, but reminiscent of what the Wild did with Matt Cullen back in like the mid 2010s, where he was a big player on that 06 Cup team for Carolina, but it's like that Benjamin Button, like he gets better with age. He's a fine wine. Like the guy's 36, 37, 38, and it's just like God, he's playing like a 25-year-old, 26-year-old. He's just like his prime is where most guys are like thinking about hanging it up. So uh, the Wild have really started to maximize this later aged uh, Matt Zuccarello. And like you said, the consistency is just there. Whether you, or not you like the the contract, and I know I've been pretty uh, critic, very critical of it as well, but I mean, the stats are there. He's backing it up and he's playing a bigger role than what, I anticipated him to when they put pen to paper for that. Like he has been um, somewhat of a, given his size, the mini anchor, you know, for that top line because he, with Kirill struggles and uh, now, you know, we have a little more information on maybe not being a hundred percent and everything like that from that injury when he got uh, fallen onto by uh, back in Winnipeg. But um, he's kind of been maybe the backsiding force of, we're just going to keep pushing along. We're going to keep trucking along and you could see it. And, I am always critical of, hey, dude, just shoot the puck sometimes. Like, you don't have to get that extra pass. But to his credit, maybe it's because he wants to really get the kicks, you know, kickstart the fire that is Kirill Kaprizov. So I like it. You know, still shoot the puck maybe a little more often. But I'd like I to agree. say, like Zuccarello at 36, I'm coming into my prime. These are some of my best years. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Well, you're like young in life. Yes. He's an old man as a player. That's the difference. <laughs> you're still young. You're still vibrant. Mm-hmm. Matt's as a player. But uh, but I'm I'm with age completely. My whole thing has been, you, you look, I understand you guys are best pals. And I understand that, that um, Zuccarello with a big twig is a... A uh, very competent, good passer. That be yeah, I'm with you. That's my biggest thing, though, is you don't need your life doesn't need to revolve around not shooting at times. Um, but Jesse also br- brings up a point that I think is great, and and it is this: Marco Rossi um, makes a world of difference. You know, because now it doesn't have to be. I I felt like it was when when it was going really well, and they wouldn't split up Hartman, Zuccarello, and Kaprizov. Jess, I thought it was um, the Zuccarello and Kaprizov show, and Hartman would contribute. And, you know, he'd, he'd pick up the garbage at times. And, yeah, he he certainly had assists. But I never felt he, like, belonged on that line. Part of the reason why I think Zuccarello is playing really well and why Kaprizov now is starting to look like Kirill, though, is Rossi. I think you nailed it right there. I mean, this guy is a big-time, big-league, stronger now player like this is when when bill garen for a long time was 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 like you know centers are important but like zuccarello can set up kaprizov and i was was like really i mean is that really what you want (laughs) rossi is fulfilling what i think you should have from the top guy at that position and that is a guy that can do a multitude of things do them well and has at least star potential and i'd like to reiterate i never called him 
a bust for the record, even pass on the show. I had questions, and yes, I had questioned trading him. I take it all back. Absolutely take it all back. Marco Rossi has shown up this year, impressed me more than I ever imagined he could. He is the ninth overall pick for good reason. You love to see it. I mean, just yeah. let's clear that out of the way. Uh, <laughs> second of all, I think what Marco Rossi brings is he has that hockey sense. He has that creativity that Mar Ryan Hartman just frankly doesn't have. I think Ryan Hartman on that line was really good at getting that net front presence. Like you said, maybe getting some of those greasy goals. He could make a play every now and then, but Marco Rossi he has the same thought process as Matt Zuccarello and Kirill Kaprizov, the same creativity, the same puck movement, the same forward thinking that Ryan Hartman just didn't have. And that's one of those things, hockey sense, you guys, as much as the world's tossed around, it's hard to have. Very few hockey players truly have that hockey sense and that hockey IQ. Um, and Marco Rossi happens to be one of them. So, of course, the three of them together are going to be able to string along something great. I think that's a line that you are going to see for quite some time moving forward. I don't think John Hines is looking to give Ryan Hartman that uh, spot back anytime soon. Ryan yeah, Hartman's Ross... right where Ryan Hartman should be. Yes. And with Rossi, I think he's gone through almost that like pro NHL puberty. If you, you know, if you want almost yeah. credit to that, because what yeah. we saw was he's getting knocked off the puck and he's almost going out there. And it's like, Oh gee, Willikers, I'm going up against, I'm taking a face off against Joe Thornton, Mr. You know, give me your autograph. But now it's like, he's a man out there. He he's got, like you said, that hockey sense has come in. He is going out there with that. Watch me. I'm going to make stuff happen uh, mentality. And you know, so it, some guys, it takes a couple seasons. Some guys maybe never actually like hit that stride of getting into that, change of mindset but um maybe it was staying here to train in the off season and just really dedicate himself to the craft of making himself better but he's matured and god he just looks so great this year i think when you try at that age to go home i think it's a negative like like it's fine to go see your folks i'm not saying don't yeah. like i'm not that mean but i also think that i want to see a guy like that who just physically needs to mature mm -hmm. hang around you know, well, you, you've got our people then. It's not like a personal trainer. Uh, but, but Jess, I, I said this to um, to Declan on the show that we did Monday. I'm curious your, your thought. And just to be very clear, I am not comparing Connor Bedard to Rossi <laughs> or vice versa. Okay. <laughs> Connor Bedard's a generational player. But you know what's funny is so, so the first game, the first North Stars game I went to ever was during Gretzky's rookie year. And Gretzky immediately, first he he had played pro for a short period of time in the old WHA. But the other thing was at that point in time, the game itself, players were strong as hell, but player, but they but they were slow. So Gretzky could move, you know, guys couldn't uh, keep up. The game's changed. So when I watched Bedard from the press box on Sunday, yes, you could tell he's got vision, like he is a superstar. But if people catch him which they can because they're fast too, he's screwed because he's not strong enough to keep the puck. So like, you know, if Middleton catches Bedard at the blue line, Bedard's probably screwed because he's going to be forced off the puck, which I thought was the Rossi problem as well. And I think the difference now is if you're a kid and you are a generational talent, your problem is everyone's too fast. Like in Gretzky's day, they weren't. They couldn't keep up with him. And what I've seen, Jesse, from, from Marco now is what we just talked about, which is he's so strong now that he is that he can see the ice, he can make plays, and most importantly, he can stand his ground. And I think like when Bernard comes to that point, he's gonna become the player that 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 we probably expected too soon here. I mean, there's a lot of different layers in that. Obviously, Connor Bedard being 18 years old versus Marco Rossi. And, exactly. you know, like there's always those certain circumstances to consider, too. But I think you're absolutely right, Judd. You nailed it. Marco, at least from my perspective, it was that physicality. He was missing that tenacity. He was missing just that physical size and presence. And I think because up until last year, he didn't need that. He was able to skate around guys at those different levels. He was able to do that at the American Hockey League, right? I mean, there's still some fast players there, but it's not NHL quickness. And I think adding that 15 pounds, there was a reason that was such a big narrative at training camp was that he added on 15 pounds of muscle. He's stronger on the puck because as you'd said, Judd, now you can't get him off of it. Now he's hungry for it. He wants that possession. And you've seen that. I mean, he's the reason that they've stayed in the offensive zone during the streak as much as they have, because he's keeping that puck down there in play with his big body. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic to see. Um, and yes, you're right. 
Marco Rossi, Connor Bedard, different players, but similar. I mean, Connor Bedard is going to have to learn that. And I'm sure this summer, that's what his summer is going to look like, right? It's going to be hitting the gym and, and putting on that weight. But you're absolutely right. I, I love seeing that out of Marco. I think that was the one element, which is funny because I've asked him before. I said, were you ever a physical player like this back, you know, in your career? And he said, well, a little bit. And certainly he talked about uh, COVID, you know, taking a lot away from him in respect to his physical health and whatnot. Um, so never want to forget that. But I think even he recognized not to the extent that he is this year. That physical aspect is very new to him. And I think he's now starting to like it a little bit too. All right, pop quiz. I give you guys, and, and we'll start with age. I give you guys a Calder ballot right now. Rookie of the year, but it's not for the league. So I, cause the Bedard debate is going to rage on and on. It's for the wild. You've got two choices. AJ, who do you pick right now as your Calder uh, candidate finalist winner from the wild Brock Faber, Marco Rossi right now on December 6th, I'm going with Brock Faber. I think just, he has had a more immediate impact eating minutes bringing like that he's he's a rookie but he's playing like he's been in the league for six years he's brought yeah. a calmness to the blue line when he's out there um killing penalties just what he's done in it and i've seen the the, the discourse on twitter on twitter.com x.com that you know it, it's a, as a defensive defenseman and all this stuff he's not gonna the guy can play it two ways like he he flashes at times in the offensive zone but it's just I feel so relaxed when I see him on the blue line. And Marco Rossi, I'm not saying that he's been leaps and bounds better than him, but Marco Rossi has kind of, um, I want to say, emerged later. So I just, he, he's trailing him a little bit in my eye. So Brock Faber is my, as of right now, Minnesota Wild Calder Award winner. I have very little to add to that because I would agree. I'm also just very partial to defensemen. I really love a good yeah. defenseman. So <laughs> yeah. there's that to be considered. Um, but absolutely what AJ said he's come in and had a bigger impact as a quote unquote maybe truer rookie if that's even fair to say and I think he's more important to the team I think Marco Rossi certainly has certainly has shown his value but isn't the Calder also what you mean to your team and I think without Brock Faber this would be an even bigger disaster back on the blue line than any of us anticipated certainly Marco Rossi was we just talked at length about how important he is to that top line to getting those guys going but I think Brock Faber gets my vote for Calder for your Minnesota Wild. Brock was in, in 19 games with Dean as his coach, uh, average, averaging 23 mi minutes, eight seconds of ice time. It's gone up to 23.57, which is absolutely incredible in four games un under Hines. All right, last question. Is Kirill Kaprizov back, Jesse? Is this is Kirill Kaprizov, or if, if he's not, how close do you think he is to being back uh, to the 97 that we have watched for, what, three years already here? He's getting there. I would give him at least maybe an 85, 90%. I still think it's, I haven't seen him full throttle. I haven't seen the Kirill, but you can see that he's skating better. His strides are better, that edge work. And that's, again, going back to what I said about Matt Boldy, is it wasn't the lack of production from There's Kirill. There's some attention. Because hey, pay attention to your kid. I just Pierce? checked him to the ground. I literally accidentally. Did you really check him to the ground? Uh, who, Didn't I? Which, Did which I kid? Which, which kid is, is yeah. Is the one that's camera. supposedly sick. Are you sick? Um, oh, are you sick? that's. Yeah. yeah. Fever? Uh, Fever? A little sniffles? What we'll What do we got? You know, he's going to be a hockey player. He's got to get back out there. I did knock him into the desk in case you saw me shake because it did. It was a oh, is that what happened? You knocked was, him? No. Oh, well, he, 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 he looks ground. fine. We won't report this. <laughs> this will just stay among friends. We won't report this. To My this. bad, guys. Child it's for services. He's yeah. fine. So he's clearly not sick. No, but uh, going back to sick you to go <laughs> going back to what I had said about Boldy, it wasn't the lack of production from Kirill that was concerning. It was the other elements it was the skating it was the kind of just lack of enthusiasm that Kirill generally had that was missing right. so that being said yes he's back but I still need him to take it to that next level just one more notch I think you'll see that in the next week or two because I do believe what Dean Evson had told both Michael Russo and actually mentioned it to myself as well that there was that nagging injury that ended the year early for him last year before returning in the playoffs so um, I think he's finally feeling like himself. He's gotten the skating, the strides in, and we will see the 97 as we love him probably very, very soon. What do you think, AJ? Yeah, I, I'm kind of with Jesse there. That's I'm, I'm going to say 80, 80%. I'm going to give, and this math maybe doesn't like add up correctly, but I'm going to give 10% to the fact of 
the consistency, I think, needs to be there. It's such a small sample size that I need to see it a little bit longer before I give him that aspect back. But then also, when it comes to the skating, I've seen that, and I'm not going to say the patent because other people have done this, but the just skate circles around the opposition, like maintaining the puck, yeah. looking for and creating options. I've yep. seen that a couple times this season, but I yep. it seemed like last year it was an every game thing because that's like just in his repertoire. That's how he pulls defense uh, defense out of position. I haven't yeah. seen that as often. So as soon as he adds that and the kind of head speed, just getting through the neutral zone with that burst of speed into the offensive zone, until I see both of those two things, mm-hmm. then he's at 100%. So not fully back, but we are we are getting there. I think that's fair. Yeah, the, he he does not edge up, edge yet like he can edge. There's no question about it. He tries at times, uh, but but his ability to play keep away is still not back yet. Did did uh, Jess? Did Dean tell you what happened now? Like you know, when... it's. I was just going to bring that up too because it's something that I guess I hadn't considered. So because he wasn't fully a hundred percent come playoffs and and at the exit meetings and all of that, and I don't know that any of us media really pushed on that I don't think we really asked how he was I know they had said didn't need surgery or anything like that but Dean had mentioned you know instead of doing his normal skating and doing his normal routines he spent most of the summer rehabbing and getting back 100% from that injury itself so with that having happened he didn't get the skates in that he's used to he didn't get to do some of those things which I'm like well duh that does make a lot of sense then that's why he's missing that element that we have known him for um, this year. So I, that's what Dean had kind of mentioned was, was the case. He's like, you know, he just, it was a different off season for him. It was a, an off season where he wasn't able to fully train like he's accustomed to because he had to deal with this injury and make sure it was all solidified. So it, was this a knee? Was was this a midsection deal? I thought it was a n- leg, an upper leg. Okay. Right? Cause he, it was he got from, folded it stems like from an, that. Yeah. Like a hip Logan old? Stanley hit. Because yeah. he got folded like an accordion. If you mm-hmm. go back and watch it, he literally folds. It looks like a hurl like hell. Yeah. But I couldn't tell if that was a leg necessarily or like a midsection thing, which would be really bad because that's yeah. a poor. Right. But but no, it does make perfect sense. And and look, mm-hmm. and we we never we never thought that he was dogging it. Like there's just right. clearly something off with him. Mm-hmm. Um and, and his confidence looked off as well. But I suppose if you can't do what you're used to to doing and i think he stayed here he didn't go home so like that right. was not a problem of not trying to train all right jesse good stuff thank you much we'll talk to you next week age fine work fine fine work yeah. i think declan should be back uh from the dentist as well soon here but um as always uh subscribe to all of our score north channels check out purple daily check out uh, judd's hockey show flagrant howls uh mackie and judd and of course for our friend Jesse, check out Bar Down Beauties, which is always having great guests on and is a fantastic show as well, talking hockey. We will see you soon.